Hello everyone, my name is Michael Lombardo with Gladfast Consulting. In this video, I'll be giving you tips and tricks on queue management as well as sorting through lists of records and reporting on those records as well, uh, primarily for incident management. So if you look in the left-hand navigator here, you'll see there's uh, several what's called applications that I have available to me as an idle user. And if I click on incident, you can see I can expand that out. I also have the ability to type in, in the filter navigator here, if I type in incident, you'll see everything relevant to incident management will come up. So I'm going to go ahead and click on all incidents. And if you look where, by default, it's sorted by the number field, and you'll see there's a little arrow pointing down. So now if I did want to sort it the opposite way. I can just click on that and you'll see now we start with one, two, three, four, five. We're going sequ sequential that way. I've got, if I click on it again, you'll see the newest incident is at the top. You also have the ability to easily sort through the, this list and slice and dice this data uh, very easily. In other systems, you may have to run reports to get certain um, queries, data. So really there's, there's several different options you have. One way you can do it is if you right click on a value. So if you see, I'm looking at the state value here. And if I right click on, on a state of new, I can say, I want to show matching. I want to see everything where the state is new. So we're now looking at a list of all incidents where the state equals new. And if I hit this filter icon, if you hover, it gives a little help test because it says show hide filter. If I click that, you can see now in kind of more human readable terms, it says state is new. Uh, and let's say I wanted to actually have the ability to add a further query here. And the category, you can see as I'm starting to type it filters right down, is software. And then I hit run. And now I have our query at the top here says all incidents where the state is new and the category software and now I just have one record actually showing so if I wanted to reset this query if you want to call it that or this um, filter of records that I'm, I'm looking at I can just go ahead and click all and now we're looking at all incidents again so to do the opposite of that let's say I wanted to see everything that was not in a state of new so I can just right click here and go filter out and now you'll see you have all incidents where the state is not new. If I hit this filter icon you can see in the quote unquote human readable terms the state is not new. If I did want to change any one of these I could say the state is one of several states. So and again we can go ahead and just run that just so you can see that and again you know you can really play around with this data uh, or play around with these different functions um, and to really get to get what you, you're looking for. Uh, you also have the ability when you click on this filter icon to sort the records any way you'd like as well. So if we wanted to sort, uh, say just by category A to Z, you can see it does kind of that that sorting for you. And again, you still have the ability um, to to just click on the top top level field. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this list back to all incident records. We also have the ability to search at the top here where it says search. We call it go to search. Um, and let's say I want to search for a certain category. Uh, I can type in uh, category contains um, or, or category. I can say category is software. Click enter. And it's now going to return a, a, a search of software. Now, um, this is sometimes confusing to end users. If you look at this um, symbol, it's not just category equals software. It's actually category is equal to equal to a greater than software, which is confusing for end users. Um, typically, what I always do is just say throw in an asterisk in front of whatever you're searching for. So if you type in software, it actually returns to category contain software. So the asterisk is really, um, it's a symbol for contains. So if I'm in the short description, and I want to search for uh, something contains um, Visio, 
right? I threw in the uh, star, the asterisk in front of it, and that actually gave me short description contains Visio. If I would have just typed in Visio and hit enter here, you're not going to get a result because we're looking for something that starts with Visio. So the search uh, in ServiceNow for a majority of fields um, is, a, is a starts with search. You can also preview records by hovering your mouse over the eye. You can also actually edit the record from this list view. If you hold shift first and then hover over the eye, you'll see these, this incident actually popped up right over this window. Um, and you can edit any, any data on this record and actually click update. And you've now updated that record actually. Another important feature of ServiceNow uh, list viewing is uh, personalizing the columns you want available to you. Um, so another, a couple other nice features of, um, uh, of ServiceNow you should know about is we can actually minimize this, this um, left-hand navigator. So if I hit this arrow, now it gives me a little bit more bandwidth to uh, real estate on the screen to, to um, you know, go through my records and, and things like that. So, if I look at the, if you look at this gear icon in the upper left hand corner, personalized list. Let's say I want to add and remove some some columns or some fields that are on that are on my list view from the incident table. So, if I wanted to say, you know what, I don't really care about. I don't want to see when it was updated or who was updated by, but I do care about the impact. I want to see the impact of my list view. I also want to see the urgency right next to my priority field. So you'll see I can drag it over here um, and then I can go ahead and click OK. And you'll see we've removed a field and we've added the impact urgency. Uh, obviously you can change the order of what's here as well. So if I wanted to put the collar up a little bit to uh, right underneath number. You'll see quickly does that. So you'll if you notice this um, this gear now has a little dot next to it that indicates that I've updated the personalized list, right? I've personalized this list, and you'll actually notice the hover text actually changed. Before it says it said personalized list, now it says updated update personalized list. Let's say you want to reset that back to the original value or or the original uh, out of the box list defaults. Um, you can say, hey, I want to reset back to the column defaults, click this icon here, and now you'll see that icons removed, impact urgency is not here, uh, an updated and updated buyer back, and now the text has been changed back to personalized list. Let's say I wanted to save, uh, you know, I'm in the service desk and I wanted to save a, a list of records for later. Um, and let's say I'm in the service desk and I want to see all critical incidents that are assigned to my group and you know uh, that are in a state of not that are not closed so basically everything that's um, not closed uh, priority one and assigned to the service desk let's say I'm always looking at these records I'm an incident manager I'm always looking at high priority records that are assigned to this group and I want to make sure they're getting taken care of so if I want to if, instead of having to come to the this form and always build this query. I have a couple different ways to save that information. So one way is I could actually take this, so I'm going to go to the end of this query because I want all of this query here. I'm going to grab it and just drag it over here and save it into a bookmark. Now I have that ability um, when this is expanded as well. Uh, it, it's just in this uh, star, the favorites column section of the, of the navigator. Uh, but you know if it's here it kind of looks it's, it's a nice quick button and it gives you some help text as to what that is So if I go back to all incidents or let's go back to our home page And you actually want to get back to that uh, Query here you are. So next time you log into service now Two weeks from now. It's always gonna be there. It's personalized for you. No one else is gonna see that you're not gonna take up <laughs> any um, space from somebody else's service now uh, session so it's just just available to you uh, you can also edit the text and kind of the, the icon and the color of that icon so if you hit this pencil icon at the bottom and let's say this is high priority kind of again put it back to that human re readable um, text high priority incidents 
assigned to service desk. My favorite color is green and let's give it a power up symbol icon and hit done. Now you can see when you minimize it, it's there. You can also save your list uh, filter just by going to uh, clicking the filter icon and hit save. And I could say P1 incidents visible to me, save it. And then again, if I just click a list of all incidents, I'm looking at all incidents now. And if I go to my filters, we go to that P1 incidents filter I created, and now it's right back. So you have a couple different ways of saving queries. You can also run reports very simply off a list view. So if I right click on priority and I say, I want to see a bar chart of all the incidents. You'll see I had no condition there. So just gonna show, bring up all the incidents here. And we have 25 priority one incidents, 14 planning, and seven in, in uh, moderate. And what's really nice about the reporting module is if I actually click into one of these, you can see I can go right into these records, right? So it says uh, these are all priority three incidents, right? So that's very nice. You can also, once you're in the reporting module, obviously you can add additional conditions here. If I wanna say this is, I wanna add in um, category is software. Go up to this right hand corner, hit run. Now we're looking at those records right there. Um, you can also change the size of these reports pretty simply. So if I wanted a bar chart, I hit this gear next to the type and I can go down and say chart size small. Close it. And then just run it. Now it got a lot smaller. In other videos, we spoke about um, adding these to the home pages, but uh, just might as well bring it up while we're here. So if I like this report, I want to see it all the time. I can just hit this drop down next to save. Uh, actually, why don't we save it first? It gave me a title, but I'll rename that title. We'll say it is um, software category. Say it's software category incidents by priority. And let's save that. And let's go ahead and add that to our dashboard. And this is going to be on my home page. So I clicked add there. And you'll see I'm looking right at that report. If I want to move it kind of looks a little weird there so I'll move it over here and now it's a little bit more user friendly so you have the ability to run reports right from the list view uh, you also have the pie chart I'll show you that real quick this is gonna be a little crazy because we did it by caller but again pretty cool that you can just run it right from the list view one other important feature of ServiceNow uh, is exporting ability so Customers always ask, can, can, do we have the ability to export um, from ServiceNow? And they think it's this long, crazy, hard thing to do. Uh, but if we just right click, uh, I'm gonna fill, bring this list down a little bit. I'm gonna show, we got 20 records here. So uh, let's say you wanna export this to Excel. So if I just right click, go down to export. We have different options. Uh, CSV, typically not used by an end user or idle user, but uh, I wanna export, click, Click Excel, starts the download process. I click download. It's that simple. And whatever you have in your list view, obviously, is going to be here. If I had more fields, I'd have more information. Uh, obviously, the filters applied, so I only had 20 records that are active and in progress. Um, really nice, really clean. Uh, uh, PDF is actually, there's some really nice options for PDF as well. Might as well show you that. You have a portrait uh, landscape, and then you have detail portrait, detailed landscape. And I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, that just kind of gives you um, each record. It gives you the list view kind of 
in a, in a PDF view and then gives you details of each record um, in, in each incident. So uh, let's see how this looks here. We have 20 records. So here's our, here's our list, right? Here's our list in PDF view. So if I just chose that regular non-detailed view option, I would just get this pretty much. But now we have that as well as each incident record. So if you have some uh, TPS report you have to get filed or something along those lines, you can um, you know print out all of or you know export all these records. Um, all right, I think that's it. My name is Michael Lombardo from Glidefast Consulting. Thank you for watching this video, and if you have any questions, you can email me at mike at gladfast.com. Thank you.